Well, get your diploma, get your dream. This special edition of Community Connection puts the spotlight on the topic of the high school dropout. Nationwide, three out of every 10 students in America's public schools fail to finish high school. And in some areas served by WGVU, the dropout area rate exceeds 50%. We talk about it. Of course, we talk about how to address, solve, and prevent this from happening. Our guest today, let me do the roundtable introduction, Ms. Shamari Nixon. Glad you're here, Ms. Nixon. Thank Nixon, you, you uh, maybe should be in school, but maybe not. <laughs> Senior at Creston High School. Parent, Wanda Couch, thank you for show, sharing your story in advance. Associate Director of the Grand Valley State University Office of Multicultural Affairs and of course, manager of the Gear Up program, Bobby Springer, Dr. Springer, I'm glad you're here as well. And WGVU grant writer Steve Chapel to talk about a very important grant driving this program as well. Hi, Steve. Hi, sure. All right, uh, a serious topic that we need to address. Perhaps we'll come up with a, a solution or two and some action items for our audience. That's what it's all about. Bobby, do we consider West Michigan in a high school dropout crisis? Uh, just um, looking at some of the numbers, um, 50% comes to mind and when I think about if any student drops out of school, if it's just one, um, that's not good and um, this community needs to look at that and uh, come together as a, as a whole to make sure that we can um, make that number go away altogether. Wanda, is this talked about at uh, parent meetings at, uh, at your water coolers? Oh yes, definitely. Um, it's a concern when you have an incoming freshman class at maybe two or three hundred and then at graduation you only have half of that um, there so it is something definitely that parents are talking about and concerned about. Yes, and I ask the same question to you. Is it something that uh, you, you hang out and discuss at the lockers? Um, indeed. Um, it, it's just the shame that I can see all the people I come into school with my freshman year and by the time I'm a senior I see only half of them there and half of them are only on track so it's pretty sad I feel um, yeah pretty strongly about it. Bobby when we talk high school dropout uh, I mean do we have the stats as far as how many are reaching their senior year or are we losing these kids uh, in 10th grade? Uh, I think we're even losing them before high school mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of students who uh, they do very well in, um, in elementary but in, in middle school, uh, we start to, um, to lose students, in particular uh, males. Uh, I can take you uh, parts of Grand Rapids uh, during school time, and there you will find um, 14, 15 year olds who should be in school, but who are hanging out on the corners, uh, you know, doing you know, foolish kind of things when they should be in school taking care of business. So, so it is a, a problem and issue that uh, we need to address um, uh, soon. Yes, like right now. Yes. Wanda, uh, I'll be blunt, how's your, how's your offspring doing? How's your boy doing? Um, my son is doing, doing well. Um, he's a senior at Ottawa Hills High School. Um, he has no choice but to do well <laughs> with me and his dad. Um, but he's, he's, doing, he's doing a great job. Um, thus far, he's doing, doing a wonderful job. What is the role of the parent to prevent a high school dropout? I th just being involved. Just simply being involved and engaged in your student's um, whole educational career from kindergarten all the way up until probably college because I still have a, I have a daughter in college as well. Um, so just really setting expectations for your child and making sure that that child is um, is able to reach that the, that expectation that you've set for them and provide them the resources and the support system that they need in order to 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 succeed in school. Hmm. So just being there and being there all the time. <laughs> we'll get into even more specifics. Mm -hmm. Ms. Nixon, um, to what do you contribute your success at this point in life? Um, I just feel that because I will be the first in my family to graduate that I have the drive to not want to follow that path. I want to be successful. I want to set an example for my younger sisters. I have a younger sister who's in ninth grade now and I feel that I'm her role model. I will be the one who she looks up to and say she did it. I can do it. So that is just my inspiration to want to succeed is my family and being the first to actually be successful in a high school career. Yeah. Steve Chappell bringing you into the conversation. Uh, we are on a roll as far as uh, 
focusing upon raising awareness. Can you set the platform as far as WGVU's involvement and this initiative? Well, as you know and our viewers know, Shelley, WGVU, we have a role to broadcast programs and to be a catalyst in the community around issues that are important in the communities we serve. That's the definition of, in the role of WGVU. So we applied for a grant uh, through the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and we were one of 41 stations nationwide that got a grant. The funding is through the CPB in concert with the National Center for Media Engagement. And the focus of this project, which on a national basis is called the American Graduate Pro Pro Project, we've given it a local name called Get Your Diploma, Get Your Dream. The focus is, is pretty clear. It's to raise awareness about the challenges and what some families and, and students are going through on a daily basis, preventing them from doing well in school, and also to put the focus on some of the solutions and the good work. So toward that end, we reached out to the experts. We're partnering with Kent ISD, with Kent School Services Network, with Celebration Cinema, with the Office of Multicultural Affairs and Bobby Springer's efforts with the Gear Up Grant. And we're trying to then follow what work is, is being done to counteract some of the challenges because quite frankly, uh, as everyone around this table knows, not all students have the mentors. Not all students have the financial resources. A lot of challenges to get to school. And in addition to programming, uh, by the way, I want to put a plug in for one that's airing on this channel October 16th. And it's, it's called um, No Textbook Answer, Communities Confront the Achievement Gap. And it focuses on students that want to do well, but they have so many barriers. Uh, so we're going to focus on that. Uh, we're also launching a website that's going to list many of the resources. Uh, it's wgvu.org slash graduate. So you can go to that website and find out more about uh, our project. Hmm. Bobby, um, can we ask? You had some personal challenges uh, that you overcame and uh, serving as a mentor today, giving back. Can, uh, can you share a bit of your story? Yeah, uh, you no, know, growing up, um, in the uh, heart of Grand Rapids, um, uh, parents um, only uh, went to um, uh, middle school, um, did not graduate from high school. So uh, they shared with me uh, the knowledge that they had. Uh, so when I went uh, to school, um, they knew that it was very important for me uh, to continue my um, school work and to and to get a, um, a high school diploma. And in my environment, um, some uh, of my friends, they went to school and some did not. Uh, but, you know, through all of it, I just thought it was very important because I wanted to uh, make something out of my life. Um, and I knew that I had to continue uh, to um, stay in school. And because of playing sports, and I want to really encourage um, teachers and parents uh, counselors, social social workers, everyone that um, never take that dream away from a from a kid because that's what I wanted to do uh, was to uh, play basketball. I was very um, uh, good at it. Um, I did very well in high school. I was able to get a scholarship, and I was able to go to to college because of basketball. And when I got to college, that's where. I, I bumped into some other people who were there for the right reasons, who were there to get a college education, and I started to really pay attention to that. And the next thing you know, I started to work harder in the classroom, and because of that, I was able to get a college degree, and now I find myself um, um, a professional uh, making the difference in my community. And it, and it all goes back to you know something that I love to do, other people helping me, uh, to get better at it and finding myself on, on the right path. Great. We're going to talk about, again, the path that you're sharing. Shamari, uh, look at this uh, like you're looking at this 20 years from now. I mean, when you, when you picture your transition from middle school to high school, I mean, were there more pressures on you? I mean, is that when you see your, your high school colleagues starting to, to drop out? Is that where we start to slip? Um. Or is it earlier than that? What are you experiencing? I believe it's a little bit after. When you start in your freshman year, it can be a little tough, but it's something that you can overcome. Freshman year is as close to your eighth grade year, so it's kind of easy. But when you go on to your sophomore and junior year, you face more challenges. So I believe that 
people are dropping out more over in the sophomore and junior year because it becomes harder. You are expected to do more ACT in your junior year. It is challenging, so people feel that it's a struggle, and if they can't overcome a struggle, they don't want to deal with it and cut it off completely, which is funding or or um, contributing to yeah. contributing to the dropout. Yeah. How much does um, today's uh, video games technology uh, mess with your your age group and steer us in the right wrong direction? I believe internet is the basis of it all. Facebook. So. When someone goes home, you have either the choice to do your homework, sit there and do it and finish it and then get on Facebook, or get on Facebook and then do your homework. But people don't realize that when you get on Facebook, 30 minutes can go to an hour, an hour can go to two hours, and you're just sitting there doing nothing on a computer when you can be doing your homework, studying for a test. So me, I try to keep myself involved after school, so when I get home, I know what I need to do to be prepared for the next day. There we are. Wanda, well, let me have you uh, uh, comment on some of Bobby's comments, and of course, uh, I would trust you're in agreement with this lifestyle. Definitely. As a parent, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, I um, grew up within the community here in Grand Rapids and with a single parent, so I think part of my determination was being that first child to get a, go ahead and graduate from high school as well, and um, what really the the support that I had from my mom as a single parent um, it wasn't complete but I knew what she expected of me she set guidelines out you need to graduate do what you need to do in order to graduate um, sh while she was busy supplying for the family mm -hmm. I focused on I have to get through graduation because that's what my mom wants and that's what's what's best for me and um, Although I didn't get a lot of parental involvement, I don't blame her because she had to work so we could eat <laughs> yeah. in that sense. So um, I made a promise to myself that once I had kids, I would definitely be involved mm -hmm. in that child's education. Um, and that's what I really feel strongly about. Um, and speaking about what Shamari was saying, uh, my son struggled in ninth grade. That was, that was a struggle for him more so than the um, sophomore and junior. By the time he got there, we had him set in order then. Um, but his freshman year was really difficult from that middle school to that high school transition where he went from uh, maybe one or two teachers to five or six teachers mm -hmm. and a bigger building, a lot more students. Um, so I think that transition from middle school to high school is a difficult adjustment. And, and speaking about the technology, it's, um, it's amazing how much that goes on with that and it distracts our kids so much. Um, you get a lot of bullying on Facebook and, and that's a whole nother show um, mm -hmm. in that sense. Right. But um, just making sure as a parent that you're on top of your game with your kids and setting those expectations and, and just really encouraging them to set higher goals. I think every generation in a family needs to get better. Bobby, can you share a bit of the program that you're involved in? Uh, yes, uh, the Gear Up um, College Day program, gaining early awareness, readiness for undergraduate programs, College Day. Uh, we're going into our uh, uh, sixth year. Uh, program started uh, 2006, uh, started following uh, the class of 2012 when they were in the seventh grade uh, many years ago, and now we find uh, this cohort of students um, in their senior year of um, high school and the program uh, centered around awareness, uh, making college um, uh, accessible uh, for the students, letting them know that hey if you really want to go to college that we can help you do that and by doing so uh, we made sure that the students were on the campus at Grand Valley. Uh, so these students have been on a college campus and in order to make this a reality I have to I have to put you there. I have to let you touch the university. I have to let you talk to the college students, talk to the professors, eat in the cafeteria, uh, have uh, class discussion in the classroom. I have to bring this to life so you can know that hey I can do this and that what that is what we have tried to do over the last uh, five years um, and one thing I want to share that gear up is, is is bigger than here at Grand Valley gear up is all over the state of Michigan it's all over the United States so we're helping students all over the country to make uh, college a reality 
Steve, here we are talking to a parent, a, a student, and an educator. This is all part of a culmination that will be coming up in the community for, uh, for involvement uh, come uh, mid-October? Exactly. These are all the pieces of the puzzle. And uh, again, the role of WGBU in, November? Yep. Mm -hmm. in November, the role of WGBU is to create the awareness and start the conversations because out of that can, we can come to realize both the challenges and the opportunities. So one way we're going to do that is November 9th at the Rapid bus station. <clears throat> we're having our first community summit from 6 to 8 p.m. And you can go to WGBU.org slash graduate to register and find out more about that in the coming weeks. We found WGBU, as we've talked with the experts um, in, in the field of education, as we've talked with parents, we found out that there are two concepts, one rele relevancy and engagement. And the experts are telling WGBU that unless students can see how their day-to-day -day work in the classroom is relevant, uh, they're not engaged. And so one thing that Bobby and I are in discussion uh, right now uh, to bring students into WGBU and work side by side with broadcast professionals to see how it's important to learn English and math and how they can apply those. So we're going to be working with some students to provide some of the experiences that Bobby talked about. Great. How important uh, are mentors? Very important, mm -hmm. actually. My eighth grade year, I did get a um, mentor, and her name is Lori Parks, city clerk, and she happened to be my mentor, and I feel that she has helped me a lot um, from schoolwork to actually going to job interviews, scholarships for college. She has helped me a lot to realize the importance of actually going to college as well as completing high school. And I feel that if possible that every child who needs one should have one because it could be of great help as it was to me. Same question to you, Wanda. Yeah, I, I totally agree with everything she said. Um, we were um, talking about um, the support system, and it's if um, one adult can reach a child, maybe someone else can reach mine. We talked about that briefly um, before we came in here. Um, I think that's that's important. It's it's every child needs someone that they can rely on and depend on and look to and be encouraged by. So I really support that. Yeah. Describe uh, a unique activity that you do uh, you do with your kids that, that might be kind of cool for the family, that might be a suggestion for... Well, some. I don't know how unique it is. We have dinner together. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, but that seems to be the time where we have a lot of conversation is around the dinner table. Um, and, I mean, it's, I don't think I'm an outstanding or extravagant type of parent or anything. I, it's just basic time. As, as the day winds down, let's sit down and have dinner and and that's when all the discussions or the topics come up and we just have conversations. So. I bet she's a good cook. <laughs> how, about, how about you? What's, what's something that you're proud of that the family does together? Um, pretty much the same. We all sit down, have a good dinner together and just talk about how the day went and if anything, if we need help or um, if we can be of like I said, help, or if we can just sit there and listen to any problems that you're having. So I believe that my family is a very close-knit, so it gives an opportunity for each one of us to feel that if we at all need anything, that we have a basis of people to go to if it was to happen. How are we intervening with, uh, with the unfortunate op opportunity that a, a child doesn't have a a stable family that that he or she can't get to school Bobby what's happening in the, in our district yeah and I think um, that's a great point because a lot of um, students don't have that that mom and dad at home uh, they might be staying with uh, a cousin they might be staying with the grandmother or or adopt adoption um, so it's very important that we um, that we reach out, uh, whether it's in the school building, the principal, the teachers, the coaches, the janitors, or it could be outside of the school building. It could be um, the, the uh, traffic cop. It could be the, the person who works at the neighborhood store. It could be someone who's at the, the YMCA. It could be a combination of people. It could be myself. It could be you. It could be Steve. Uh, we all have to uh, chime in and, and do what we can to help this student continue to move forward. Uh, just uh, 
conversation weekly or monthly could be a big difference. Uh, that's why when we, the GIRA program, when we work with students, I work with uh, 500 some students, so I don't get a chance to see them all you know, every day, but when I do have that contact with them, I try to make it meaningful. I try to give them something that they can hold on to until the next time we get together. And then when we get together again, you know, try to give them some more. And that's what we need to do as a community. We need to uh, love our young people, you know, and help them to move forward. Mm. Steve, obviously you're, you're speaking with the professionals. Uh, what, what can you add? Well, during a break, before we came on air, Bobby was saying just that very thing, that it's not just our own children we need to help. We need to reach out to the neighbors and others. And I think we're blessed in, in West and Southwest Michigan to have organizations that do just that with mentoring and, and others. Uh, one of the partners on this project is Kent School Services Network, Carol Payne McGovern, and they bring services into the schools. I believe they're in 15 schools currently, and there are a lot of organizations out there that we're going to be reaching out to in the coming months to ask them to partner with us on this project and expand those services, create awareness, because some parents and caregivers simply don't know what to do to help their children or the children they're caring for. So that's what the experts are telling us. And there's a phase two beyond December we need to raise more funding in order to move this project into what we're calling a phase two. We hope to connect with the businesses and other organizations in the community to create a mentoring program. So there's something on the horizon we, uh, we want to strive for. Hmm. Not to name names, but how are your teachers doing? Are they aware that, uh, that they need to step in and, and help out someone that they may see a sign and symptom of, of some problem? I believe so. There's, there's a lot of teachers um, out there who care a lot about how the student is doing. Um, <coughs> Creston, as well as the Grassep School that's in Creston, they ensure that if you need help that it's available. You know, tutoring is always available. Uh, counseling office is always there to help you. So I believe that they give a firm foundation for a student to be successful only if you want to. If that student can't, that's where youth advocates step in, where they are assigned um, students to help that's so not that's on like the right track. So like an internal mentoring program within your own age group. Yes. Wow, we have that written down? No, that, that's a good deal. And your relationship with teachers? Uh, I think it's, it's good because mm -hmm. I'm up there quite a bit um, just to, for, with my presence. Um, I th one of the things that my son has said that he likes about school is um, the, some, the teachers, and I asked, well, what makes, what makes this mm -hmm. teacher so much better than any other? It's, and his response is, I know that she cares about whether I succeed or not. And I think that's just, that's just real important in a child's life to know that someone else, other than parents, care that I am going to make, make it and um, be a support system for that. Um, at Ottawa Hills, there are tons of resources, like she was saying, at, at Creston, our counseling department put together probably about six to eight pages of resources, and it's just making our um, parents be aware of those available resources from just from from um, Pine Rest or Ar Arbor Circle or whatever is out there. There's a health clinic right there on campus um, for them. So just there are tons of resources and we just have to make sure that parents and students are aware of those so they can take advantage of them. And back to your, your comment, the caregivers, the neighbors that uh, if we see uh, the red flags to intervene early. Yes, and I want to go back to a, a point that Ms. Couch made was about when a student knows that you care. I mean, when they know that you care, now the walls come down and now that relationship can really blossom because I know you care. I mean, and when I don't know you care, you know, I just, that connection just doesn't happen. And I kind of just think about my life in general I can just think about all those people who really cared about, you know, me, you know, as a as an individual, and and because of that, you know, they were able to help me in um, in special ways. Steve, uh, looking for final comments as far as uh, how the community can get involved in this initiative, please. Well, uh, thank you for that question. That's one of the key goals of this project is to engage the community, to mobilize the community. The best way is for them to visit the website dedicated to this project. It's wgbu.org 
slash graduate, again, wgvu.org slash graduate, and just connect on that link that says contact us. And you can uh, offer ways of getting involved. Uh, and watch that page, please, because there's going to be an ongoing listing of upcoming programming and community events you can attend and uh, make a difference that way. Final comments from you, Bobby Springer. How are we going to solve this problem? One step at a time, my friend. Yeah, I just think if we all, you know, join hands and, and help, you know, any young person that comes into our um, reach, you know, if we would um, just, you know, make a difference in that uh, kid's life, I think uh, that will go far because it's going to take all of us. I can't do it by myself. Uh, the next person can't. The next parent can't do it. Uh, by themselves, but we need to do it together uh, as a community, and I think um, uh, Grand Rapids can be a very special place. Shamari, what are you going to study when you uh, head to head off to higher education, please? Um, I don't know yet. I know I want to be in the health field, but as far as what to study, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Um, I do deeply care for people, so I think that is where it all starts for me. Great. And your final comment, Wanda? Um, I just encourage parents um, to get involved, um, not just parents, but the teachers, the communities, the business, everyone to get involved in this because it's not just my problem or your problem, it's our problem and that's what we need to do yes. to get involved. Thanks for your suggestions, your honesty and all of your successes. Take care. Thank you for watching. <laughs>